Welcome back to Eastern Creek. There's some of the massive crowd sitting in the grandstand here. They're up on the hills. They're in uh, under canvas covers. The weather's been fantastic. It's held off for us, and that's all we wanted it to do. And a big, big crowd here. They've come from all over Australia to watch this 500cc Grand Prix. Should be one of the best races we've seen in this country since the days of Phillip Island. Everybody on the money, and it could be any one of four or five riders could snatch this. Marvellous, marvellous atmosphere here. And the crowd scattered right around this circuit. Flags are flying, uh, support for riders. Really has been a great build-up here. And out they come, the 500s. Well, as they warm up, of course, the world champion from 1993, Kevin Swans, did a fantastic job last year. He's riding with a broken bone in his wrist to find out about that. After this morning's practice session, Charles Stewart spoke to the man himself. Kevin, as world champion, you seem to have played a very low-key role this weekend. Is that the way that you prefer it? Well, yeah, it's taken a bit of the pressure off of me. Um, I had a bit of an injury before the start of the season, so nobody's really expecting us to do a lot here at the first race. And that's kind of the way I'd rather have it. It's, um, like I said, taking some pressure off of us, off me, off the team, off everybody involved. And uh, I'm just going to go out and try and do the best I can this weekend. I have to ask you about the injury. Do you think that it's going to hold up during the 30 laps? Well, I'd like to think that it's not going to be any problem at all, but having just broke it uh, just less than three weeks ago, uh, I'm sure it's going to give me some trouble. I haven't done anything anywhere near race distance yet, but uh, I know I'm going to go out there and just see how it holds up and, and play it from there. Great. Well, Kevin, thank you very much indeed, and good luck today. Thank you. So, Kevin Swans there, you can see he's a very brave rider, a very spectacular rider. Well, Richard, you know, I know he's got a broken bone in his hand, but, I mean, we know he's a 110% man, isn't he? Kevin is, but he's also now one of those men who knows how to think of championship, and he won't push himself too hard. We'll take a break. The bikes are on the track. We'll come back very, very shortly. This is the one we've waited for, and there's Daryl B. For the big boys to come out and play live from Eastern Creek, exclusive on Nines Wide Sports, the Fosters Australian 500cc Grand Prix. The flags are flying here all around the track. The flags are coming down out of the sky. There's Aussie flags wherever you look, and of course, there's two great Aussie riders in this race too. Barry Sheen, terrific atmosphere here today. Oh yeah, it's great. You know, and so far, you know what we Gary McCoy. And, uh, you know, the, the guy in the 250 race is sensational. See yeah. the little flag, I love that. Sydney Olympics 2000, I seem to have heard about it before, Darren. I love that flag, the it's battle nice, has just begun that we had back there a little while ago. Isn't that a great flag too? And there it is, the greatest flag to me in the world anyway, the Australian flag as it comes down. And have a look at the size of this thing. It's enormous, huge as someone might say. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> I tell you what, Craig Connell in that race was very, very good. Not that's not paddling Australia's boat. He really deserves oh, that. Exactly. And you can see all the. Uh, you'd like to have the Kodak contract, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, you got to deal with them. That's why you mentioned it. <laughs> and uh, the sponsors flag coming down to Fosters. Great to support this event, Fosters. They do a terrific job here at Eastern Creek. They put a lot of money into it. They're getting the rewards today. Big crowd in attendance. The weather's held off for us. High expectations for this race. Daryl Beattie carrying a slight problem with his elbow from coming off yesterday. You've got Michael doing back on the bike, fit and well. And I tell you something, the Australian flag just might be flying at the end of this. Kaczynski will have something to say about that. And so will <laughs> Kevin Swans. Yeah, with um, just looking at them all sitting down there on the line out of the commentary box here, temperature-wise now, if they've gone back to what they were running in the last two days of testing, that will be just about spot on because temperature-wise, it's the same as the last couple of days have been. National Anthem.
And that's the daughter of uh, the great Australian, Slim Dusty. There's no more Australian man than Slim Dusty and Anne Kirkpatrick doing it. her rendition of the Australian National Anthem. That set the tone. Let's hope the Aussies can carry it on, Bass. Yeah, it would be nice, wouldn't it? Being ever so slightly biased. Uh, so Kevin Schwantz sitting there. He's hasn't had the best of practices, but uh, hopefully we'll have got the thing sorted out. So, uh, Luca Catalora, so fast at the end of last year, so together. Certainly a 500 rider now. And I'm sure you're going to see. But that's the man that could uh, stick the cat amongst the pigeons. Well, there's John Kosinski. Wayne Rainey joins us in the commentary box for the 500cc race. Wayne, I mean, Kosinski's done it all right, but Luca Catalora has been on the money too. So has Daryl Beattie. Yeah, everybody's looking. Uh, they were going well in qualifying, but, uh, you know, right now is when all that stuff stops and uh, everybody's going to be going for a good start. And try not to make too many mistakes the first couple corners, let the tires get hot and see what happens in. Yeah, that was uh, talking about not making any mistakes. You were the master at that, weren't you? Settling down and getting your head right at the beginning of it and uh, not getting it all sideways on cold tires. Yeah, there's a real fine line there. You know, I always try to get a good start and go as quick as I could and try to get a little buffer on those guys and try to get them to give up before halfway. But uh, we'll see who can do it this time. <laughs> Wayne, now that they've switched the uh, Erda, has switched the, the pole position to the other side of the circuit, do you think that's a good move? Yeah, I do. I think, uh, you know, the pole guys should have the best starting position. That's what they work so hard for in qualifying. So it looks like it's right now. But at the end of the day, Wayne, as you, you I know, and you know it so well, getting off the, you got, it doesn't matter where you are on the grid, if you can get a good start, get it off the line quick, um, you know, you could be on the left or right hand side of the grid. It doesn't make any difference as long as you actually make a good start. Yeah, that's right. You got to, if you're in with the top three guys in the first corner, you can just set on them and, and let the guys in front of you uh, heat the tires up and you can kind of judge them for, for tire movement. And uh, I think the first three or four guys into the first turn are going to break away from the race. Wayne, well, the other thing there, of course, we've now got four different makes of bike on the front row. Gee, that's healthy with a minute to go. Yeah, I mean, it looks great. I mean, look at the front row. Uh, you know, the Kajiva looks good. We know the Yamaha's good. The Honda looks good. And, and Schwantz on the Suzuki. Uh, it's it's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, I'd rather be out there, though, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, I can believe it. Uh, actually, it's been interesting to see how well Schwantz goes. What do you reckon? Because he's, he hasn't had the best of practices, but we've seen that before. And uh, how do you think he's going to go? Well, I think if Schwantz gets the whole shot, he's going to be very hard to pass. The Suzuki's very good on brakes. And this is a really a one-line racing track. The best place to pass is down the straight into turn one. Yeah. I think if Schwantz gets a good start, he could be tough to pass around this track. All right, Wayne, we'll come back to you during the race. We're only a few seconds away from the start now. Nice to have you aboard, mate. Nice to have you at the creek. Wayne Rainey joining us throughout the commentary here with Barry Sheen, of course. And this is a magic start. Mick doing there on bike number four, the Honda in its new colours. It's a striking colour scheme. Uh, it's great. It's nice and easy to pick out. John Kosinski, bike 11, the red Kajiva. That's Luca Catalora there wearing the Italian colours on his helmet. So Luca Catalora, you see McDoon in the centre. Kevin Swans on the other side. Vice has come down for a Swans. He's now in the office. He's locked in, ready to go. This is the best bit. As soon as they get the warm-up the warm up lap out the way, that is the best bit for you. You know, As soon as you get off the line from now on in, you forget about, you know, the, the sort of pre-nerves butterflies and that and uh, settle down to the business. As we've talked about tyres, because of the changing temperatures here over the last three days, I mean, if you were going to ride the day, would you rather be on Dunlops or the Michelin's? Uh, with the 250s and the 125, certainly the Dunlops, but uh, with the 500 class, um, Michelin have a lot of work to do in that they're supporting everybody in their auntie. The only um, good team on uh, Dunlops are, is Kenny's team, Kenny Roberts' team. So therefore, they would be able to put more effort in, in that they could put special qualifying tyres, etc., etc. OK, let's have a look at the grid, because, as I said, four different makes on the front row. Yeah, our pole position from John Kosinski on the Kajiva, Luca on the Yamaha, Mick on the Honda, and Kevin Schwantz on the Suzuki. That's that's a real exception. Alberto Pooch has been sensational in practice, 250 last year and going really well. Ito, Daryl Beatty, Doug Chandler struggling a little bit. Alex Barros, third row of the grid. Alex Creville, Neil McKenzie, John Reynolds. Fourth row, Sean Emmett. Lopez Melia, Scott Dewan, absolute first time out ever on a two-stroke. John McWilliams, Jean Dat, Navo, Pellicini, Hangeli, Migliorati, Bonhill, Mirales, Fore, Papa, Garcia, Kevin Mitchell. How many more? Loiter, Loiter Duracas, and Scatola. 
that's a lot of people in the five. Yeah, it is. Let's go back to Scotty Doon for a second because, I mean, obviously his battle here today is going to be to be the first privateer home. He really has put in a great performance over the last couple of days. Well, sensational. You know, he's never been on the bike and never ridden a two-stroke before, and they're vastly different. You see what it is, is using a good oil, you see, Jezza, that's what it is. Oh, get one in, one action. Um, Anybody got a sock? Oh, uh, shut up. <laughs> right, um, basically, I think he's done a marvellous job. What he needs to do is keep his, all his, uh, keep his head together, and um, he should have a good ride, because he knows Eastern Creek, he's been very sensible in practice. Vital thing as they line up, does is the first rush off. If anybody of the good guys make a muck up, that's the end of the story. Okay, set for a start. You're looking off the uh, screen of Beatty's Yamaha bike number three in front of him. K Kajiva, that's Kaczynski. Luca Catalora on five. Daryl Beatty on three, but this is the front row. The drag to the first corner going to be important. Kaczynski on the other side of the track for the first time. 30 lap race, long way, Dazza. Long way to go. Swan's carrying an injury. Look at Kaczynski. The nurse, red lights, wait for the green, only a couple Whoa, of seconds. Racing Kaczynski. all away. Look at Kaczynski, puts his head down. Swan's got a good start, but Kaczynski, the Kachiva like a rocket. Whoa, I tell you what, he judged those lights perfectly. He dumped that clutch as the lights went green. That was good. Look at that. He is on a screamer. That was not a jump start, I can promise you. That was just spot on. Lucky, sensible judgment, call it what you like, but he judged it spot on. Kevin Swartz is in second place. Big doing challenging him all over the back of him at the moment. The newly coloured, brightly coloured Hondas. They look great. Edo is in, in behind him too. Luca Catalora didn't make the best of starts. No, I think um, as long as uh, Luca, they can all basically stay together for the first three or four laps and not lose too much ground while you get yourself sorted out, feel how the tyres are doing, as Wayne said, look look at the guy in front of you and see, him, see how his tyres are working. You know, basically the first three or four laps are just getting round and staying upright. Marvellous sound and sight here as the big 500s open up at Eastern Creek. Round they come. Look at the different lines as they try and fall in now under brakes, but it's Kosinski. Oh, boy, what a start. Electric stuff off the line, just gunned it. Yeah, when the guy pressed the green, green button, I reckon he pressed the clutch on uh, Kosinski's bike because that was, you know, it's lucky, you know, lucky judgment, and that was spot on. He's been the man to chase since he arrived here at the circuit, and he certainly picked it up today. The Kojima out in front for the first time past the stands here. Kevin Swans is in second. Michael Dewan now. Michael Dewan with a challenge up on the inside, yes, and we'll get Swans. Dewan with a brave one. Oh, the left hand and do a fantastic stuff. Yeah, Mick, Mick was saying whenever you talk to him that uh, that is the only place that is the only place you can pass, you know, easily is at the end of the um, fast start finish straight. Wayne Rainey, what about the start of Kajiva and, and Mick doing now on the charge? Yeah, you know, John got a good good start there. Mick did the right thing, getting by Schwantz early. Uh, he would have been a hard guy to get by because he breaks so hard, but he just <laughs> went under him again. <laughs> so he's going to have to get by that, get by Schwantz to get uh, to catch up to K Kaczynski for sure. Why doesn't that surprise me that Schwantz brought back? Uh, if anybody knows about fighting with Kevin, <laughs> Wayne does. Oh, look at Luca, just getting a little bit of a wriggle on there. Catalora sitting in behind the Honda there as he comes up over the hill and gets a little bit of a hippy hippy shake going now. But Swans is in second place. Kaczynski at the moment has just bolted. He's just gone. There he is. The gap back there. So it's Mick Dewan now back in third. Catalora putting some pressure on him. Wayne, do you know anything about um, the, the compound of the tyres that uh, Luca's chosen? Was it the same as they ran in the past two days, or have they gone for a, a tricky one? No, basically it's it's been race rubber all weekend, and uh, it's 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 rubber's going to last the the whole race. If anything, it's a little bit down on the side grip, right there, right when you crack the throttle on in the middle of the corner, it's down a little bit. But all the tyres go off during the race, and I think you'll be able to see everybody out of the seat. Yeah. Doing again up on the inside on the straight here. The crowd go up in front of us. Mick Doing, he's very fast down the straight and very quick through the left hander. That's twice he's done that to Swans. Swans comes up on the brakes, has a look. Doing will shut the door on him though. He does that. So Doing now in second place. Catalora back in fourth. Swans is in third. Kaczynski's just bowling at the moment. He's gone. This is the dice. Second, third, and fourth. There's the readout. Kaczynski doing Swans, Catalora, Edo, Beatty now, Push, Graville, Chandler and Barros. They're the top runners. 
and um, Scott Doohan's down his 16th place. Yeah, it's good. Oh, just want to have a bit of a moment there. Yeah, it's going to be interesting uh, to see after a couple of laps, as you were saying, Wayne, it's one thing stringing a couple of fast laps together in practice, but it's another thing doing it for 30. So uh, what's your opinion on, um, as far as Kaczynski going the whole race at this pace? Well, I, I'm not sure what the pace is right now, but he's going to be checking his lap board. He's going to be trying really hard. 32 is that, 32 is well. Uh, okay, it's still pretty slow. And if uh, Mick starts to knock off a tenth or two, it's going to rattle John or it's going to make them go faster. So uh, it's really early to say right now. I still let, think they're letting the machines warm up and the tires. And uh, I think uh, I think Mick can make a run at him. And I think when Catalora gets around uh, Schwantz, that's going to move Mick and uh, Luca up. So there's going to a lot that's going to be John's going to be thinking about. Right now, it's uh, it's early though. Why? Yeah. Sorry. That, that's what I was what I was trying trying to explain uh, at the beginning of a race, Wayne. It's, it's quite hard to get across the for the first four or five laps. You're not doing anything special. You're just ticking along and looking at everybody else, feeling the tyres, and and it's quite difficult to get across to people that you're really not having a real monumental go the first four or five laps. Well, that's right. In qualifying, you never really race with anybody. So now you're racing with every you're racing with the guys you haven't raced with all week. You got uh, full fuel loads. And you're seeing the lines that everybody else has taken that you haven't seen for three days. So uh, they're still saucing each other out. And I think Luke is trying to, you know, he's trying to find a, a, where the strong spots are right now to get around Schwantz. As you can see, Mick's getting away a little bit. And Schwantz is slowing Luca down. Wayne, just a question. You know Kaczynski better than most. What's he like under pressure? Does he like to ride under pressure, or would he rather just get that buff and try and keep that? Well, as my teammate, he didn't do very good under pressure, but uh, <laughs> on the Kajiba team, he's leading that thing, and I think that's the role he wanted to be in. And uh, he's, you know, he's right now he's doing a good job, but it's early on, it's early in the race. Uh, you know, he hasn't been racing with these guys all year, but uh, right now he's in a good, smooth rhythm. And uh, if he stays away, he's going. It's, it's going to be tough for these guys. But I think if Luca can get around Schwantz, he can he can push on up there. That's why I asked you the question, because you know him pretty well. Oh, Kas Kasinski there now. Have a look at the battle here. Here's Swans, that's Catalora up in behind him. And He's he been terrorising him, hasn't he? Yeah, and Iso just behind Catalora, and then Alberto Pooch, good up in sixth place. Um, Darryl Beatty is in seventh. Catalora coming down, tucked in under the fairing now, chasing Swans through there to Suzuki pretty fast. I tell you what, Kasinski pulled out 0.4 of a second that lap. <laughs> quite a lot. Oh, and a plenty of shake as Catalora goes up and has a look on the inside of Swans. You can see the bike really get the rattle up as it came out of the corner. Catalora closes up and Swans closes the line in front of him. Remember, riding with a broken bone on his wrist, doing a fantastic job, the world champion at the moment. Catalora terrorising him. Here's Mick doing out in front, though. In behind Kaczynski. He's out in front of this bunch. <laughs> Yeah, Kaczynski was um, 0.4 of a second quicker, and the other quickest guy, second quickest guy is Doohan, who's lapping half a second quicker than Schwantz. Wayne, what are you looking at now? Because Mick's going to make a break. He's now got the chase on Kaczynski. Yeah, you know, Mick's going to have to get up there a little bit closer, that's for sure. He's, he's lost the draft on the Kajiva. John's in a good, good, comfortable pace right now. Mick's going to have to up the pace, and we'll just have to see if, uh, if the bike and machine's ready for that. Yeah, and it all comes down to the case of Oh, it's not until it's too late that you find out that you've got the, the wrong cho uh, tyre choice. And it's just the luck of the draw, isn't it, basically? Because you don't know what the temperature's going to do. You don't know how hard. You could get a bad start and have to tear your tyres to pieces to catch up. It's such a lottery. Yeah, that's right, Barry. This, this track, another thing with this, with this circuit is that it's so bumpy going into the corners. And you've got to use the brake for so long. And it's really hard on suspension and tyres. It's really a terrible feeling when the bike's not working properly. But uh, as the fuel loads come off, it's going to get a little bit better. And I think you'll see Mick going a little quicker. Why well, just have a look at that shot there when we go to the handlebar shot. You can see that little brake lever there inside that he used to his thumb. There he is using it now. And that's really revolutionising this, uh, this braking system. Yeah, you know, uh, when I raced, I, I just used the, the, the rear brake and the left-hand turns. I, could, I didn't have a good, comfortable feeling using it in the right-hand turns, and Mick really relies on the rear brake a lot. So it takes a lot of concentration to do what he's doing there, but it looks like it's coming real easy. Yeah, that's the thing. I was really surprised when he told me what he was going to do. I was thinking, oh, you're getting a right old state doing that, putting the, the brake lever instead of the clutch. But it's, it's really interesting to watch because you see him coming to the corner and, you, you know, you see the clutch. Um, his, his index figure and the other fingers on the clutch, and you see the clutch coming in, and then you see the dab of the brake. Obviously, you only use a back brake going into corners, so it's, it's a really good shot. 
And there he is, Michael Doohan with that revolutionary break. That's the little lever yeah. you can see underneath where you can ride Doohan. He's on it now. Yeah, now watch, see his thumb now, watch you let it go. Sometimes gives it a little dab right in the middle of the corner. As Wayne was saying, that uh, Mick's going to have to up, up the pace now. And um, just, he can't afford to let Kaczynski get, get away too far because nobody knows if Kaczynski can keep the pace up. But if anybody can catch him, Mick can do it, you know, and Mick is tactically a, a very good rider. And under pressure, I think, um, you know, Kaczynski, who knows, we'll have to wait and see. There's the gap back there. You're looking at one, two, three, and four as they come down. Good shot of look at Luca. Cantalori's got the race face on, no doubt about that. The eye's pretty wide there when you come around that left-hander. Kevin Swan's in behind him. Luca sits up under brakes. Seven or 30, a long way to go yet. Oh, oh in the pits. Daryl Beatty into the pits. Ah, oh, rotten luck for Beatty. God, he's had a terrible weekend here. Yeah, bad start to the season. Wayne uh, Kosinski is still lapping quicker than Mick. He was 32-1 uh, against uh, Mick's 32-2. So I, I reckon Mick's still sort of settling down into it. It's only six laps down out of 30. Yeah, actually, I predicted a little bit quicker pace. Uh, I, was, I predicted about a 31-5 lap times to 31-2s. Uh, but right now, you know, John's uh, his heart rate's coming up because he's pulling away at the, at the pace he's going. And that's tough if you can pull away. I mean, it's tough on the opposition if you can pull away yeah. like that and keep that heart rate. So he's uh, he's looking good right now. He's the only guy in the 31s. He's, he did a 31-6. Wayne, what are you, uh, Beatty going to the pits there? Tragic start for the team there in the garage, and uh, looks like that's it. I'm very, very surprised, you know. I mean, racing is, is really unpredictable, and... Uh, I have no idea what happened to the bike, so it, it's really hard to say. There he is there, off the bike, the helmet's off, having a cool drink with Dino. Yeah, I, uh, I'm sure it's not too cool, though, after he gets it down. <laughs> OK, back to the action here. Michael Doohan, we're looking at it at the moment, and he's now got Catalora starting to make uh, some ground on Mick Doohan now. Catalora really on the charge. He got past Swans and really now chasing Michael Doohan. Through the left hand, they go again. Kosinski out in front, it's the big three. The gap between Doohan and Kosinski has gone from 2.8 to 3.4, so, and um, Kosinski's just done a 31.7 against a Doohan 32.3, so that's a big margin, Wayne, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Like, you know, what I, have to, what I think the reason why the times are so slow, slow is because we have an overcast day and the track temperature's cooled off, and that's really, really bad for the tires. Uh, they need heat from the surface uh, to get good feeling out of them, and right now they're just kind of like riding on ice. Well, Luca Catalora staying a monster Mick Doohan. I mean, he really has closed up the gap, Wayne. I'll tell you, if uh, if, if Catalora can get by Doohan and, and get a couple tenths on on uh, Kaczynski, that could rattle Kaczynski a little bit, and he could start making mistakes. Uh, there's still a lot of time left. Scott Doohan currently in 15th spot for those around Australia and doing very well on the private bike indeed. His brother at the moment holding off a charge from Luca Catalora. Although, having said that, I think, uh, Wayne, if, cause if there is any incentive for, for John Kosinski, it's beat one of Kenny's bikes. Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> I think uh, John would love to just yeah. uh, just to win a race. Last year, he didn't have a ride, so uh, yeah. now he's going to have to... He's trying to earn that paycheck. He's trying to wipe out a bad image he's had, and for whatever reasons, uh, right now, let's just, we'll just see how he does this race. There's still a long way to go. Sure. Wayne, come back to us shortly. Charles Stewart, pit side. Yeah, thank you, Daryl. I'm with the very disappointed Daryl Beatty. Daryl, hasn't been your weekend, has it? No, I guess uh, I guess you could say that in a little way, but, you know, that's racing. It's a long season. So uh, what went wrong today? Well, the bike uh, on the warm-up lap thought I had a little bit of a problem. The guys checked the bike over, and then uh, as the sort of race was going on, just from the start, we were starting to lose horsepower, so... I don't really know what the problem is at the moment, but uh, you know, it's no fault of the team or the bike. It's just something that's crept in before the start of the race, and you know, unfortunately, there's not much we can do about it. Daryl oh, Beatty talking about that with Charles Stewart. Luca Catalora now. He's having a quiet chat here to Mick Doohan. He's close enough. This could uh, do Kosinski the biggest favour in the world because if Luca manages to get past Mick, Mick ain't going to throw in the towel. He's going to have a go at Luca. And if they start fighting with one another, it's going to give Kaczynski, who's now got 3.6 second lead on Doohan, the best present he could ever ask for. Ito now has moved up into the top six too, but Michael Doohan holding off a very determined Luca Catalora. It's the new Honda against Yamaha, and of course, Kajiba out in front. So three different makes doing the battle. Back and forth is Kevin Swanson and Suzuki. That's the front row for you. They're spread a little bit differently now. 
Michael Dewan doing everything he can to keep Luca out. Luca drops back a little bit, and then uh, Dewan puts the head down, and Luca comes back again. A fantastic dog fight this for second and third. You've got to hand it to the Kajiba lot. You know, you go and look at their engineers. They've got their chief engineer is ex Alfa Romeo. They have spent an arm and a leg on their racing team. You look at their bike, it is quite exceptional. It's sensational. You know, the little special pieces on it and that. And it's, it's just so outstandingly surprising to see a European manufacturer actually out acing the uh, Japanese. Battalora had another little look there around that corner a couple of times now. He's moved right up on the back of McDoan. Here's Kosinski, wheel up in the air, thunders over the top of the hill. No one behind him in sight at the moment. The Red Kajiba doing it pretty well and he's throwing it around. Wayne, what do you reckon? The Kajiba really looks like it's handling good, doesn't it? It doesn't get all crossed up on change of direction or anything. It just looks like a pretty neat little package to ride. Yeah, you know, it's really looked good, Barry, since 92 when Lawson had it. I thought it was ready to win races then. Yeah. Last I'm... year, you know, we raced with Doug here on the Kajiba, and the bike really goes well around this racetrack, and uh, it's, proven right, it's proven that right now. Wayne, just a question. I, I heard a rumour, and I know uh, you were discussing this the other night, you went very, very close to maybe looking at a ride on the Kajiba. I know they courted you long and hard. Well, you know, we went to the factory. We had all the, the factory technicians leave. We didn't want nobody to know I was there, and uh, we took a long, hard look at it. The Castiglione's are really a great racing enthusiasts, and uh, had dinner with them, and they were actually trying, they were actually crying, trying to get me to sign up, and I, but it was just tough to leave a, uh, leave Kenny you know I just I just felt that was the best program for me till the end of the year but uh, you know I think you know maybe early on in the career you never know there was just there was just an unhappy time there at one stage of my career but it all turned around yeah you lost me you lost me money I, I said to I in actual fact I knew you'd been to Kajiva and I said it's uh, the two days after you'd been there um, that weekend there was a Grand Prix or the following weekend I said you'll never guess who's going to ride the Kajiba next year. <laughs> well there we go, there's some news that I think will surprise a lot of Australians. He went so close, we look at doing with a delicate touch, we'll be back with a rough touch when we come back because the race is a long way to go, stay with us. The Foster's Australian 2, oh no, it's a 500cc Grand Prix. I don't know where we got the 250s. Better am I? 12 out of 30 to go. We're looking at Kosinski blasting his way down the straight again on the Kajiba. Now, here's the real battle, and that was the gap back to second and third. Doing under all sorts of pressure from Catalora, but he sits it up again and throws it around the left-hander. I tell you what, Kosinski now has 6.4 second lead on Doohan, and... Uh, Barring any problem. Oh, Luca! Round the outside. Me. Can he do it? He's done, <laughs> done it. it. <laughs> well, you're saying a big break's happened there, I'll tell you. That was a that was a big move. It was a good move because Nick was certainly going to close the door, quite rightly so. And he, uh, Luca thought, oh, well, go around the outside. Watch this. Watch. He has no option. He can't get up the inside there. And he did great. You know that was. That's pretty exceptional. Brave. That is brave. What do you reckon of that, Wayne? Well, I certainly wasn't planning on Luca's <laughs> in. I think he just got thrown in there and uh, Mick it on the brake a little bit early, and and uh, Luca had no choice but to either run into the side of him or, or go off the racetrack. And it just so happened he just barely skinned it. I bet he had a high heart rate there. I tell you what, Kasinski's 31.8, doing 32.6. It's uh, flabbergasting, isn't it? You know, when you think of the difference, uh, he's the only guy in the 31s. Well, I think you're going to see Lucas start coming now. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I know the Dunlops are well capable of it, and, and Lucas' style makes he was easy on the tires. I think uh, he can he can gas it up, but I, I don't know if uh, Kaczynski's just kind of keeping that pace, waiting to see what these other yeah. guys are doing. That's but that's the big question, isn't it? Because uh, if Luca eats in, say, knocks uh, in the next five or six laps, knocks two seconds off, then we'll see how much it rattles Kaczynski, but we'll see how much he can... Uh, Lucas lapping 32-1, so he's still um, what, three tenths of a second slower than Kosinski. It'll be interesting, in the next three or four laps we should get an idea of what's going on. There's a little bit of, uh, little bit of home ground problems here. This is Creville, who's ridden the 500 for a couple of years, and uh, Alberto Pooch, and Pooch is making a brilliant job of it. Yeah, Pooch on 17, hasn't he been a yeah. sensation? 
I mean, the transition of the 500s, and he really has put in some brave laps around here in qualifying. And uh, he's picking up where he left off in qualifying. He's enjoying the race, and he's very competitive. Yeah, everybody, uh, the Italian, Spanish, French journalists, they're all talking about him, and uh, quite rightly so. You know, he's had no experience of the 500 whatsoever. And he just rode one at the end of last year and went exceptionally well on him. Why? And it's, it's unusual to see someone make that step so quickly and do it so well. I tell you, uh, Pooch has really surprised me. You know, he's uh, he's adapted to the 500 pretty quick. But I think this this track is it's not uh, it's not really you have to be real throttle happy. So I think it works well for him. But I tell you, I don't know if we're all uh, safe here setting with these two Spanish guys like, racing each other. <laughs> I'll tell him you said that. <laughs> 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 yeah, you'd have to say that Creville last year got the Golden Training Wheels Award. He flung it at the fence so many times it was embarrassing. Here we go now. Our leader coming back onto the start-finish line. John Kosinski aboard the Kajiba. Tucked in low. Knows he's got plenty of buffer. Getting plenty of information from the pits. Nice tight shot of the bike at work there. What do you see, Wayne, when you see a shot like that? Well, you know, it's... Uh... You know, John right now, he's going to have to, you know... The... It's getting hot under that helmet, I guarantee you. John sweats a lot, too. So uh, I think if Luke can get a half a tenth to a tenth of a second a lap, it'd be enough to make John go faster, maybe make some mistakes that he doesn't want. But right now, John looks he looks pretty confident right now. He looks pretty comfortable. And it uh, looks like he's trying hard, though. You can see him really hard yeah. on the brake there. So uh, and there's a lot of racing left. And uh, we'll see if he's been training, both of them. There was uh, two things that happened that lap. Kosinski got a bit held up with a back marker and Luca turned up the wick. So that's the slowest lap Kosinski's done by well, nearly three quarters of a second, the late 32, and Luca did a 31.9. So that lap certainly played into Luca's hands because he's turning the, turning the power up and uh, Kosinski, as I said, the slowest lap. So he certainly will have, uh, at 6.3 seconds, the difference now. So he's he pulled it back a little bit. Scotty Doohan currently in 13th position, doing a terrific job. Scotty Doohan on the, on the privately entered bikes. Uh, he really has acquitted himself incredibly well. He's got a great incentive as well because his teammates right behind him. <laughs> I'll tell you, with a six second lead, that's, uh, that's, that's great. You know, as a rider, you work very, very hard. And, you know, a two second lead's a lot for uh, when you're working hard. Yeah. But when you got a six second lead, uh, that's, you, know, you can really build up on that and it's really good. And it kind of gets the opposition or your, the guys that run second and third, it kind of like they just kind of give up. So uh, well, I think John's going really well right now. He is because now he's just gone straight back into the uh, the 31, 31, 8, and Lucas 32, 4. And the, the gap now um, has gone up to 6.9. So obviously that, you know, that lap where he did get held up. He's able to say, right, I've really got to get my finger out now because he's gone straight back into the 31s and he's the only guy that he's lapping every single lap in the 31s. Yeah, the, you know, John's, uh, he's got a good, good pace going out there. He looks real smooth and he can, like you said, he can wick it up when he has to, but I'm, I'm kind of surprised about the high 31s. Uh, I think if, uh, if Luca could have got a better start and got a little bit closer, maybe they would have been going a little quicker. Well, I'm just a question. You're surprised at the looking at the first Grand Prix of the season and you haven't seen a lot of each other. Are you surprised that Kojiva, Yamaha, Honda at the moment, the gap is here? Well, I'll tell you, you know, it's four manufacturers and they all do their own development program throughout the, the off season. You come to the racetrack and basically they're all within a tenth of a second. <laughs> it's just amazing how they can how we can do that. It's quite incredible, isn't it? Same with the tyre thing. Michelin, completely different to Dunlop. The, the, way they, the way they mix them, the way they make them, yet yeah, they're virtually identical. You know, the, the lap times you can do on either tyre. Yeah, you know, Barry, early on, I heard you say, you know, about the Michelin and having, having the feel, but in a lot of ways, that's an advantage because uh, you can put uh, five different guys on five different tyres yeah. and, and get, to the, get to a race tyre a lot quicker. Than a lot quicker. The, yeah, the Dunlop guys, I know, you know, I've, I've gone into a race where I'm morning warm-up, I'd, I'd still be testing his tire, trying to find a better tire than what we had. Uh, so it, it's, yeah. a lot of times, it's, uh, it's it's difficult with the Dunlop, but sometimes it's a huge advantage. Yeah, no, I was just saying that they, they were in a position to respond quicker to you, you know, like when you were saying, oh, I want a different construction, this, that, or the other, they could make it a little quicker, and they didn't have to make it for like 10 riders or whatever. Yeah, for sure, you know, the, the, the Dunlop's done a heck of a job last year. We, uh, Basically, we, at the end of the season, we had tires that were just working phenomenal in the heat. Uh, we had a little bit of problem in these type of conditions here, but uh, this is where the Michelin had us last year, but it looks like Dunlop's made, a, made an improvement in the cool condition, which is where we had the weak spot last year.
Michael doing bike number four, struggling now back in third place a little. His brother's doing a fantastic job. He just went up one pace into 12th. So Scotty Doohan sitting in 12th place now. This is Luca Catalora. There's Michael Doohan. Kaczynski, Catalora, Doohan, Swanson. Ito are the top five runners. And look at Kaczynski doing it well out in front. The Kajiva is lifting wheels. He's just kissing the, the, the corners of the circuit that he wants to pick in the apexes. No pressure on him whatsoever. Yeah, last lap 31.9, and he now has 7.1 second lead on Catalora. And when he goes over the line this time, let's have a look, see what happens. Well, you'll get a, a look back here. We should be able to see the gap back. Here's Kosinski down the bottom. We look back now, and there are the other places for you. So he's got a handy lead, but we've seen those leads eroded Seven, away before. Three tenths of a second, 7.4. That is phenomenal under this pressure, Wayne, isn't it? Three tenths in a lap. Oh, yeah, you know, John's... Looks like John's keeping the pace, and uh, looks like Luca's kind of coming back towards Mick a little bit. Uh, I don't know if there's a problem with Luca, or if, if uh, he's getting a little tired, or if Mick's just kind of upping the pace a bit, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens between those two guys. I know the Honda's going to have a little bit of an advantage at the end of the straight. Kaczynski, Catalora, doing Swansito, Creville now. Creville is up into uh, that sixth spot. That's after 17 laps. A long way to go yet. Great battle back through the field as we look. Pooz, Barris, Chandler, Reynolds, Garcia, Lopez, Bella. So as we look at that, we'll take a break, come back, and there's a lot more to happen yet. Ten laps to go, Kosinski, Catalora, Duan, Swans, Ito and Creville. They're the top runners for you. John Kosinski doing a fantastic job on the Kajiva out in front, just leaping it up in the air, just kissing the curves where he wants to. The pressure's not on him. He's just pacing himself at the moment. Well, he, the pressure is on him because he's putting pressure on himself. You know, when you get in a situation like this, uh, it's quite quite ironic because you, you're leading by second, that's not so bad, then you're leading by two or three, think great, then you're leading by seven seconds and you, and you lose one tenth of a second in a lap, the next lap you get the board out and you think, oh boy, they're catching me, they're catching me. It's, uh, it's a tricky thing, isn't it, Wayne, when you get in that situation? Yeah, I tell you, you know, leading the race is the hardest thing to do. It's, it's, where, I, it's where I love to be the most of the time. Uh, but, you know, if you look at Johnny, if you watch his head, and you watch his body motions throughout the corners and stuff, he's getting a little bit tired, so he's trying really, really hard to break those guys and force the pace. Uh, I think, you know, John's style, he, what he does is that he uses a lot of corner speed, and, and now with the way the tires are, they, they can, his style is really well. It works well for that because there's so much grip. As you can see, to go fast, he's got to use the front tire so much, and that yeah. takes a whole lot of physical energy. Yeah, it does, and as you say, you feel pretty knackered halfway through the race, don't you? Looking there at Mick doing Wayne, you know, we're talking about Kaczynski and his attitudes with Yamaha, and, of course, then he went to, through the Suzuki thing and seemed to get himself in such a, a tub of hot water. He had nowhere to go. He came out here and raced at 250, threw the thing away at the end of that and wasn't seemed too interested. All of a sudden, he's found his niche. Is it as simple as that, that he's finally found a team that he's happy with? Well, I think when you have to eat, you don't have a job. It makes you makes you ride really tough. But, <laughs> you know, in John's case, uh, you know he had a he had a really good he had the same opportunity I had in 1991, 92. You know, he was a world champion coming into my team and uh, from the 250 class. Uh, but I think you know in his condition, he wants to be the guy that uh, everybody surrounds him and he gets all the attention. Obviously, with me there, that didn't work. But it, but really, it was equal attention. It just so happened I won more races than he did. And, and uh, he put a lot of effort into qualifying, and, and when he would out-qualify me, I wouldn't let it rattle me, and in turn, that would rattle him. So he pretty much always give up, I thought, when he was racing against me, but, uh, but now you can see the performance of John Kaczynski on the Kajiva. He's the lead rider, everybody surrounding him, giving him all the support. And that's what John's been wanting since 91. Uh, uh, last year, he had the same situation on the 250 Suzuki. He was the only rider. Everybody was supporting him. But that Harada on the Yamaha beat him, and uh, it, you know, John was riding well. It just so happened these guys got really pumped up just because Kaczynski was in the class. And uh, they, you know, I think John uh, misjudged those guys. And last year he, he just blew his confidence and uh, ended up without a job halfway through the season. Well, gaps all back end nearly went there. 
Uh, gaps up 7.9 seconds now. Do you know, the funny thing is, Daryl, you'll remember this. Alan Jones, one night when we were doing a Formula One thing, said, well, Kosinski, his temperament, he's much like the Italians, and I'd never thought about that. And that is so spot on from AJ because uh, John blows his lid pretty quickly, as do a majority of the Italians, and uh, they seem to have uh, hit it off fantastically well. You know, he can come in and shout and scream about the bike, um, and the mechanics are shouting and screaming back, and it's, it seems to be working really well. Very interesting here. One through nine are all the factory bikes, and it's 25 seconds back to the first of the privateers. Well, there you go. That's, there's no substitute for horsepower, support, and above and beyond everything, money. Let's come back to the action, Luca Catalora now. Bike number five, wearing the Italian colours that Baz has just been talking about, the temperament. His temperament's all right. He's going pretty well at the moment, Luca. Yeah, he's the most un-Italian Italian I've ever come across, to be quite honest. This morning I spoke to him, it was five minutes before the warm-up. He wasn't dressed or, you know, he had clothes on, obviously. <laughs> he didn't have his leathers on, and he said, oh, yeah, you know, it's not this, it's not that. He's very, very calm looking, Calcaloa. Yeah, you know, Luca sure is. You know, I've, I've, we've been to races where they've literally had to come to his motorhome and wake, wake him, him up. up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've got to get him motivated. You can be that laid back and go to sleep. Michael Dewan making a little bit of an impression, Wayne, now, I think. Mick Dewan certainly turned the wick up. Yeah, you know, you know, doing. He uh, he can't run like he used to, but he does a lot of swimming. And uh, Mick Mick knows the importance of physical endurance. And as we're seeing right now, he uh, I know Mick trains hard. I know how hard Luca trains. Uh, it's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens here. One of the things I've noticed about Mick this year, and I'm sure you have too, he's put a little weight back on. He got very gaunt, and he looked very. I know he wasn't weak, but he sort of looked weak because he'd lost so much weight. But now I notice he's a bit fatter in the face. He looks a bit fuller in the body now. Well, I, you know, I don't, I haven't seen Mick up close, but uh, and I know speaking for myself, if I'd lose, if I'd come into a race two pounds under what I, where I wanted to be, uh, it was a, it was a tremendous effect on my uh, physical endurance. So, you know, maybe Mick's put has put on a little weight because weight is strength. So, uh, you know, maybe that's what he's done this year. Yeah, it's funny. Well, you know, the the point was, if you don't have too much fat to lose, you only lose two or three pounds, and people say, wow, you lost a lot of weight. You know, when you. When you were in hospital and Daryl spoke to you, you'd, you'd lost not an enormous amount, but it really showed in your face. And I think anybody that doesn't carry a lot of weight, it, it, the tiniest uh, change does, does show a lot. Yeah, for sure. You know what? I raced Grand Prix since 88, so I was really, really in tune with what made my body uh, you know, perform at its highest level. And, uh, you know, in the hospital, basically, when you guys came to see me, I was on my back for six weeks. And uh, basically, you know, your muscles uh, deteriorate. Uh, and it's really bad for you, but as far as these cases right here, uh, you know, Mick, uh, Mick's really in tune with his body, and that's that's very, very important for riding a 500. Uh, Kaczynski now leading by just over eight seconds. Still on now, Michael doing bike number four, the Honda, and it's sparkling new colours here. He's ripping around the circuit in third place, trying to get back into touch with Luca Catalora, this man who is in second place at the moment, chasing John Kaczynski, that man there, who is still lifting wheels and really looking good on the Kajiva. He's in total control and has been since the flag fell. Made a rocket start, unbelievable start, and has built on that lap after lap. Just looking at um, the way the Kajiva comes out of the corners, it doesn't seem to really work with the back tyre anywhere near as hard as the Honda. I was looking at the Honda. Um, especially coming around that corner there from the back, mix things really seems to be spinning the back quite a lot coming over there. What do you think, Wayne? Yeah, you know, John, he's a, he, when he rode on my team, he was a lot harder on the front tire. He, uh, he used the brake and the front tire to adjust his corner speed, whereas I didn't depend so much on the, on the, uh, the brakes going into the corner, but I used a lot more throttle from the middle of the corner to coming out. And uh, like I said, with his front tires, the, the, the performance has, got, has come up so greatly, especially this year, for his, his style and, say, Lucas' style, they can get away with it because uh, because the performance of the tire is so good. But you look at Mick, Mick uses both both tires yeah. pretty even, and uh, so but he's a little bit harder on the throttle on the exit of the corner. Kaczynski, Catalora, Duan, Swansea, Tocqueville, G. Push having a real big ding-dong battle going on back there with uh, Creville. That's been unbelievable. That's under 23 laps now. Now, Scotty Dewan, he's been fluctuating. He was 11th, 12th, 13th, back to 12th. So he's putting in a pretty good ride. And it's Emmett. And the rest of the places go through. Big lineup of talent here. And it's a big, big field. But Poosh is the one that's really been doing the job. And that's him now chasing Treville. They have been at it since the word go. 
It's been a dog fight be between these two. Hey, champ, what's it like being in the commentary box? You said you were nervous about it. You're going okay. Uh, I, I tell you, it's uh, it's a lot different. You know, I, I prefer much rather to be racing, but uh, sitting here and watching everybody, and you can, I can see little problems. And uh, like, take for instance these three guys here. There ain't three other guys I, I would w hate to be behind in these three guys right here. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? What are you looking at? Well, you know, they, they, uh, they're they really inconsistent on the racing lines. Uh, usually, like for Bill, he doesn't really go fast until he's following somebody, and, and now he's leading these guys. So, you, <laughs> you know, it's, and the other guys don't know what they're doing because they're following for Bill, so it's, uh, it's it could be quite a mess. Yeah, at this point of the day, he's got to be Barros. I mean, you know, he's way back in eighth place. And for Barros to be, uh, you know, he's Barros's performance been up and down like a fiddler's elbow, really, when you think about it, because he really looked like he was coming on strong last year, and then he flung it at the fence at Assen, and then in Spain, and uh, it just hurt his confidence. And uh, okay, like won the last Grand Prix in Spain, but basically it was handed to him on a plate. Alex Crivelli looking out there, and don't forget, fans, after the uh, this race, we'll be looking at Wayne Rainey in depth, and there's a wonderful interview that he and I sat down and uh, put together at Parramatta the other day, and there's some lovely stuff in this, and stuff that I think you'll get to know Wayne Rainey a little bit better. That's coming up after this race. Now it's Crivelli, who's right in behind him on the red, white, and blue bike, and he has done a super job, I'm telling you. This is straight into the class, and the dog bites on. Barros has a little look up the inside of Poosh. Can't do anything there, though. Catalora has now pulled back a second on Kosinski. He's pulled it down to seven seconds and lapped uh, just over half a second quicker than Kosinski. So we didn't see it, so we don't know whether it was traffic that got in the way or what. But uh, Luke is certainly one second closer, and Mick is two seconds, 2.1 seconds behind uh, Luca. Seven seconds the lead that Kosinski has over Catalora at the moment. Seven seconds. Catalora inching away at it, trying to eat away at it. Of course, Mick Dillon back in third, trying to get back in touch with Catalora. This is the real dice, though. This is Graville and Pouge having a bit of a shake there, and <laughs> Barris closes up behind him. What a ding-dong this has been. I tell you, you know, Pooch is doing a really, really good yeah. job, considering the, the experience the guy in front of him and the guy behind him has. Uh, you know, one thing that Barris is really good at is going in on the brakes really hard, straight up and down, and... Uh, you know, I'm really surprised that he's not uh, he's not performing as well as I expected him to. Uh, but Pooch is he's doing a really good job. Yeah. What, he, Wayne, I've heard Barry talk about the difference of coming up from another class into the 500. So I'd be interested to, to know your feelings about it. What's so difficult about a 500 if you've come off a 250? Well, oh, I tell you, just from when you throw a leg over the bikes, it's it's quite a bit bigger. Uh, the 500 just wants to accelerate and go straight. It doesn't want to stop. It doesn't want to change direction. All it wants to do is wheelie and spin out. So it takes a lot of bit of, it takes a lot of physical control and a lot of mental control. And uh, a 250 basically takes no muscle at all compared to a 500, as you can see right there. The barrel's going under that guy. So, uh, but uh, there's a, you know, there's a big difference with it. The tire profile from the front to the rear of a 250 is really in line with each other. It makes the bike really easy to change direction. And a 500 need such a big back tire because of the, the power it has for, for traction that it, it just it doesn't want to turn so it's, it's really a handful to ride and keep on the on the racetrack words from Wayne Rainey there as he watches this dice going on two shot uh, the blue white and red bike number 17 Barris on six Creville on bike number eight you changes there they've gone around lap after lap but they haven't been that far apart pooch the one that everyone's talking about bike 17 could have a big future in 500s the way he's adapted so quickly i remind you john kasinski out in front he's doing it pretty easy seven seconds in front of catalora wow kasinski made a really slow lap that time that was uh the, his slowest lap of the race and the, the gap is down now to 6.8 seconds to um Kosinski Catalora. So I don't know what went on that time. We don't we don't know. Maybe traffic, but uh, next lap round we should see. Yeah, uh, Barry. You know, right now you know the 6.8 second lead. I don't know. Three laps to go. Three laps to go. <laughs> you know, exactly. John just got it on cruise control. Yeah. Just yeah. you know, he can sense the victory, and uh, you know, I think John's playing a real smart race right now. It does it doesn't matter how far you beat him by, as long as you get there yeah. first. Absolutely, totally agree with you. And with three laps to go, you know what it's like just to turn it down half a second a lap. It seems like you're on a Sunday afternoon drive. Yeah, it? and I tell you, you know, when you when you back it down, like right now, he's probably backed it down about 10 percent. The bike's going to be a little bit looser because he's taking pressure off both the front and rear wheel and the. 
you know, he, like I said, he can sense the victory. He's being easy on the tire there, right there. He's easy on the throttle. He doesn't want to hurt the engine. So, uh, you know, if he doesn't, if the bike doesn't break, you know, John's going to win this race. Yeah, and really deserves to. There's no, nobody can take it away from him. He's, uh, he's been really good in practice. He's ridden hard all the way through. And what do you reckon, does it? Well, it's just, a, I just think sport's such a marvelous thing, the way times will change. You know, I mean, just a few months this guy's career has just turned completely around. He won his own home Grand Prix. He was competitive at the end of the year. Obviously, he found a great home that he was content with at Kajiba. And now you look, he's come around the first race of the year. He looks like he's going to win that. I mean, that's the wonderful thing about sports. You can be down one minute, but you can certainly be up the next. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. A lot's turned around for him, not to say the least. He's bank balance, you know, and... Uh... There's two brothers in Italy, the Castiglionis, that will be, that Wayne knows, will be sitting on the edge of their couch and they'll be so happy. Yeah. OK, Luca Catalora now, he's uh, in second place. Probably got to be content with that, but as we say in sport, the ups and downs and the way things can change, anything can happen, sometimes does. Catalora won't back it off too much. He'll keep it going to the flag. He's in second place. Michael Dillon is in third place. As we watch the style of Luca Catalora aboard the big Yamaha. Yeah, you know, racing, uh, racing motorcycles is very unpredictable. You know, some days you wake up, you know you're going to win. Some days you wake up, you don't know what the heck's going to happen. And, uh, you know, like right now, you know, there's a lap to go. And I've seen guys, well, you've seen Capriosi, you know. He, yeah. uh, he kind of ran out of brain power there that, that one turn. <laughs> but uh, he's going to he's gonna have to learn pretty quick to be world champion. Wayne, well, I guess the thing another, a lot of people would be surprised about is how delicate you use the, the clutch and how delicate you use the brakes. I mean, I know the equipment is so good, but there's no violence about what you do. I'll tell you, you you've got to be, you got to be really aggressive, but it's got to be controlled, and there's got to be a limit on, on how how hard you get on the throttle. Yeah. The, the, the hardest part with the 500 is right there where Mick's at, right in the middle of the corner where the bike's completely bent over. That's when you have the less rubber on the ground, and that's where they want to spin out the easiest. So. With all that power, you know, 200 horsepower, the things will spin out real easy. And especially this late in the race, uh, the tires have gone off, and uh, but the engine doesn't go off. So uh, it's, it's uh, you got to be real careful, but you have to be aggressive. Michael Dillon being aggressive. You see the bike just stepping out a little bit as he comes in that very fast part of the circuit now. Final lap for John Kosinski. As he winds down the Australian Grand Prix, he will be absolutely over the moon with his victory. Let me tell you, not there yet, but not far away. The big red Kajiba now comes around. Kaczynski just lifting the wheels. Hasn't changed his lines at all in the last 10 laps. This will be a sweet victory for him, I can tell you. A bit of traffic in front now as he makes his way round to the chequered flag. Wonderful race from Kaczynski. From the word go, he was out of the blocks and gone like for a rabbit, I'll tell you. Yeah, that's right, Daryl. You know, when John come around the first flying lap, I think he had over a second lead. And when you see that as a rider, that just excites you. You know, you know everybody else behind you couldn't hang with you that first lap. So it just tends to, to, to you tend to push it a little bit harder. And when you get when you can pull away the way John did, you're the most excited guy out there. And that helps for, you know, for pulling away. Bit of a panic coming on here. It's a bunch of back markers. You'd have to say, forget it. Just leave them, let them go. Six and a half seconds in front on the back wheel. OK, John Kosinski now comes down the hill here at Eastern Creek. The crowd will stand up, acknowledge him. Great there race. he is from the United Brilliant. States. John Kosinski over the line. Oh, boy, that was a big race from him. Luca Catalora will take second place aboard the Kenny Roberts Yamaha. There he goes there at Michael Doohan aboard the Honda in third place. So it's USA 1 and 2, Australia 3rd. Kosinski up on the peak, really loving this. Oh, boy, he'll talk about this one for plenty of time. Well, Wayne Rainey, it's been a marvellous experience to call a race with you. Thanks for your time. We'll be talking to you and Kenny uh, uh, in just a few minutes' time. The American flag being picked up. You've done that plenty of times before, and we've got a lovely tribute coming your way after this race. But I really want to thank you for coming to Australia and being part of this telecast. Well, Daryl, I want to thank all the Australian fans for all the support they've given me the last six months and basically throughout my career, and uh, I'm very happy to do this for you guys. Mate, we love you in this country. There it is, Kosinski, Catalora, doing Swans, Edo, Creville, Fouge. That's how they finished. We'll come back. We've got the presentation, a special tribute to Wayne Rainey. Lots more to come yet. Stay with us all around Australia. There'll be a tear in your eye, I can tell you.
looking at the winner of the Australian 500cc Grand Prix, John Kosinski, exclu exclusive and live on Nines Wayward of Sports. Barry Sheen is with him, and Barry, what's the winner got to say? John's sensational. Yeah, I don't believe it myself. Uh, I didn't think we had the, the ability to keep the, you know, the, making the high 31s, and and uh, but the Michelin tires performed better than I thought they would, and. Um, you know, the bike was, was really consistent, stable, and it was just, you know, the team gave me a bike I could ride with, and, uh, you know, we were just able to stay constant, and I think that was a key to, to winning. Oh, it was certainly constant. I mean, virtually every lap was in the 31s. Yeah, we didn't, you know, we knew it was going to be tough to stay there, and we didn't, you know, know if we could keep going that far, but, um, you know, everything worked out great, and we're very happy. Were you tired at the end? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, it's it's only my fifth race back in a 500, and uh, you know I need to get another full season under my belt just to get the fitness up to you know up to par. But uh, we trained really hard, and I felt good, and uh, we're right in there. I mean, so you're going to get better then? You better believe it. <laughs> Thanks very much, John. Thank you. Luca. Luca, good ride, second place, very hard race, I think. Yeah, I think it's. It's the best result for us today. We expect this, and uh, I just made a little bit too slow start. And uh, in the first part of the race, I was not trying hard as I can. And when I tried, it was a little bit too late to 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 go to catch Kaczynski. But it's okay. I'm happy. Did you have any problems? No, the bike was running good and tires pretty good. Congratulations. Thank you. Hard ride, H, third place, 30 laps. Uh, well, it wasn't. It was a bit of a dawdle around, really, just trying to keep it together. You know, things didn't work out the way we wanted to do, obviously. And, um, you know, we just couldn't produce the times we are doing in practice. And, uh, you know, maybe we need to do a bit more testing, I think. Yeah, just on the monitor, after sort of 15 laps or something, you could see the back end of the bike really working hard. It was about two. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah. So after the second or third lap, yeah? Second lap, I was crashed. And, uh, you know, like, I figured then maybe it's a bit of a problem, you know. But, um, you know, the other guys rode extremely well. And, you know, this is where we finished on the day. I, I think we just need to regroup and get everything working a little bit better. And, uh, you know, we've got to kind of stop the thing being so inconsistent. Best of luck. Well, third's better than nothing. Well, yeah, well, you know, we finished. So there's a long way uh, to go in the championship, so we just keep our heads down and, and try and do the best we can. Thanks, Mick. Cheers. The Australian flag will fly on the podium. We'll see that when we come back. The champagne will flow and Mick Doohan will be part of it. Have a look at the crowd. Stay with us. <laughs> are making their way around in front of the podium now by the hundreds. They're coming from all over the circuit. Great stuff here at the creek. And, of course, the champagne will flow. Mick Doohan in third place there. John Kosinski on top of the podium. Let's go to Alan Jones. To Giacomo Agostini, Mr John Ryan, regional manager, Carlton United Breweries. Now, to make the awards to the riders, I'd like to introduce the Honourable John Fay, Premier of New South Wales, Minister of Economic Environment. Oh, you can do better than that, come on. First place, John Kaczynski. Second place, Luca Catalora. Third place, Mick Doohan. Now we'll have the national anthem for John Kaczynski.
to get the champagne ready. Mr. Fate, it is a bit before we shower him with champagne. Okay. Agostini absolutely drenched there. So 15 times world champion, if my memory serves me right. The crew from Kojima. I've never seen Alan Jones move so fast in my life in the three presentations. Great stuff here. Kaczynski's the win. When we come back, we talk to Rain Rainey in a way that you haven't heard him uh, talking about his life before. Stay with us that straight after the break.